let's kick into it, Jess. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for taking time um, to speak to Eastern Film fans. Uh, it's a it's a real pleasure for me, to be honest. Um, I've been following closely your career um, and everything. And I want to start from the beginning because I, I do with all my guests. I like to start from a, a martial arts background and, and how you got into martial arts. What drew you to, to start martial arts in the first place? Because... Really, that's the kind of catalyst to your to your journey to a certain extent. So, how did Certainly. that come about? Well, thank you for having me. First of all, You're welcome. Um, uh, yeah, I started martial art at eight years old. Obviously, like some of you, uh, if your listener can hear right now, I'm not from the UK. I was born in France, and uh, back in those days, in the seventies, when you were a kid, either you play football or you do judo. So I don't know what it was like in the UK, but judo is extremely popular with kids in France. And I guess that's the reason why we have such a strong team in judo. I was terrible at football, so I stuck with judo and then moved on in karate and, and yeah. very quickly uh, become passionate about martial art. Also, I'd like to say I'm not going to get into too much details, but I had a very tough and rough childhood. I had an abusive father. So at 14 years old, me and my mother moved on. We ran away from the house and I started getting my first job. And I walked in a video store and obviously being passionate about martial art, I watched a lot of martial art movies and I was like, okay, that's what I'd like to do. But obviously I didn't know how. So I quickly moved into competition because it was a way for me to express myself artistically. Mm -hmm. I was doing in a ring at the time before the cage. I was doing in a ring what I wish I would be doing in the front of the screen. Ah, interesting. Okay, so that's interesting. So actually, you, you kind of saw that and thought, actually, that's what I want to do. But then from your martial arts background, obviously, you got into it was MMA at the time back in the day before it was even uh, UFC. And you, you started to get into that arena for all the, the journey that took you there was the journey from your life, really, because you got into something that you were passionate about. It drew you away from you know, bad influence in your life or whatever to get away from it. And you took you on this journey. So MMA and then transition to UFC. I mean, that was quite big in the in, in the UK when it came. It kind of it kind of hit us. Um, it was huge in the States and stuff, but it came over here. Um, and what was that transition like from MMA to UFC? Was it something that obviously a natural step up to do? But obviously it was a big guy. It was all of a sudden it was this, this big thing, obviously. Well, I started fighting in Thai boxing initially in 1987. Right. And obviously, because I watched all those martial arts movies, I would introduce different kicks than I would see in those movies, like take window kicks. And yeah. my instructor didn't really like that. So I moved on to Japanese kickboxing. And I fought in the U.S. in 1993. And back then, they had the first UFC on TV. Mm. And that's the first time I witnessed it. And I was like, okay, I want to do that. I came back into Europe. And then moved to the U.S. in 95, started doing some of the early MMA, what we used to call barnacle or, or Norse bar fighting, which was yeah. like very much on the ground. And then moved to the U.K. in 96, and that's where the U.K. MMA scene really started with people like Lee Asdell and Milton Keynes uh, and Andy Jardine here in the U.K. Uh, in London. And with the first start, small promotion. So I started competing in those, and the early 2000 cage race started. And take it, took it to a different level. Mm -hmm. And I fought in Cage Rage number two as the main event. And then I moved to Japan for a while to really improve on my grappling skill. So I stayed in Japan for one year, came back here. And obviously, the MMA obviously already became bigger. We had the first UFC show here uh, at, um, <clears throat> I think it was called Brawl in the Hall or something like that, uh, which was massive. And then uh, I kept competing internationally in the US, in Asia, in Japan. And then uh, eventually fought for the UFC when he started getting a little bit bigger. Now, it was nowhere near as big as it is now. Yeah, it yeah. was becoming bigger. I think they were a before Conor McGregor and an after Conor McGregor. Mm -hmm. But still, I got to fight yeah. in the O2 Arena in front of 20,000 people on pay-per-view around the world, which is something on its own. Two, two. There was two um, excellent fights and I, and I think probably highlights and I'm, I'm sure you'll pick them out so maybe you can pick your highlights but two I think um the, the we're kind of back to back Dennis Seaver was it uh and Anthony Torres they was like back to back in UFC and stuff and they they were stand out they were big fights they were big they were big people um um I think um Anthony was um 
a big a, a, a big card for you anyway at the time would have been quite big. What was it? Do you got any memories from those fights and stuff going into those? Because obviously at the time, they would have been probably the biggest fights you would have had for UFC. Yeah, I suppose name wise and with the crowd, but obviously yeah. I remember when I fought Danny Siever. Danny Siever at the time was number one, ranked number one mm -hmm. in Europe. He was yeah. the guy to beat. So everybody thought I was going to get beat up. And it's funny because when we did the way in, and uh, you had two thousand people just watching the way in, I yeah. could clearly see into into his eyes that he was overwhelmed, because yeah. even so he was ranked higher than me, much mm -hmm. higher than me. Yeah. I fought in bigger event than him. I fought yeah. in cage rage at Wembley Arena. So I'm used to all of this. Yeah, so I yeah. could see that for him, it was completely new. And obviously, um, the fight didn't really work out. And also, I felt like the UFC picked him because they wanted to do show in Germany. And he was going to be the poster boy for Germany. So I also think he had a lot of pressure on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, the accumulation of all of this, and obviously people are underestimating me, man, Dan, I beat him in about a minute. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. You was like it's like for you of, of all your fights and stuff. And we'll come on to other things in a minute. But all your fights was this was a, a standout for you uh, from your career from um, the MMA at that time. As funny as it seems, uh, after I was cut from the UFC, um, yeah. I wanted to get back on track and I wanted to fight a very tough opponent. So you got two options. A lot of people what they do is they get easy fight. You try to get some sort of winning yeah. streak. Mm. Oh, they want to get a hard fight. I went that way. I was like, I want a hard fight. And at the time, you had a British fighter called Peter Irving. Okay. And Peter Irving was very, very tough. He was a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He had multiple Thai boxing fights. He was a strong wrestler. And he was an inch away from signing to the UFC. And he also beat a guy, beat a guy that signed for the UFC. So he was like that close. I was like, if I beat this guy, then I should be able to go back into the UFC. Mm -hmm. And he was a very tough opponent. And same again, I was superior, I think, psychologically. Because he's a tough fighter, he's very skilled. Yeah. But it was a one-way street. I knocked him out in the first time. Uh, and it's a fight I'm very proud of because I think he was a lot tougher than people gave him credit for. And also, I displayed some great skill in this fight, I believe. So I was very proud of that fight. Unfortunately, that didn't allow me to sign up back to the UFC. And I kept winning and winning and winning. And I think by that time, the UFC thought I was too old. So that's when I decided, you know what? Let's get into the movie business. Yeah, and you, and you did. And you did. So... I've seen some of the uh, feature films. The, the the picks really, or probably the one that was prominent, and all of a sudden you stood out because I was like to the wife, "I'm sure that's Jet. Is that Jess? Which was like Night Fair, where you play this taxi driver, and it was like you know there was a that was a big role because all of a sudden I was like, I'd seen you bits and pieces, but nothing really prevalent at the time and stuff. How did that come about? That you know, obviously it was quite a big part for yourself. Well, when I started in the movie business, same thing. I didn't want to go the easy way and try yeah. to make connection with the, the uh, <clears throat> celebrity world. I started as an extra. In yeah. fact, I remember extra recognizing you. I was like, Jess, is that you? Who saw me fighting in the O2 <laughs> arena? And I'm an extra next to them. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's me, but i got to start somewhere. And some yeah. of the stunt performer recognized me, stunt coordinator. So they go in touch. I start training some of them. And that's how I started getting little part when I had to be thrown around and so on and so forth. Yeah. And um, there's a film director called Julien Seri, who's mm -hmm. also a very big martial art fan. And we spoke a few times online. And one time I went to Paris, he said, hey, let's let's have a coffee together and talk. And then two years later, he did Night Fair. Yeah. And it was a last minute movie who was written, produced, directed, and edited in 30 days. Wow. So absolutely. So it was a lot. He was supposed to do a different film. And he got dropped out at the last minute. And he was so disappointed. And all of his friends, including producers, said, hey, let's make something. You know what I mean? Let's just shoot something. Yeah. And we did this movie um, in 22 nights. And then they needed guys. And he thought of me because initially I was supposed to be just this big shadow who was threatening who could also do his own stunt. So he contacted me. He said, hey, I've got a role for you. And as I started doing the movie, he was like, hold on a minute. This guy can act. And I find him very interesting on the camera. And my part got bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, there's a light on my face. Then I want to shoot my background. He wants to understand where I comes from. Because initially I was a boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And and then, awesome. and then all of a sudden, that film comes out. It's my face on a poster with my <laughs> name on it. All over the underground, I was like, hey, 
Hollywood, here I come. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You made it. Once you get your face on the poster, I've done it in a in a small, veg, much smaller way. Uh, once I got my um, Eastern film fans on a poster, it was Vengeance with Stu Bennett and stuff for World by Oscar. And I got there was like, look, I made it. I've got Eastern film fans on a, on a Hollywood poster. It's brilliant. The same thing. Once you see your face up there, it's like that's it. So highlights and and then coming to it as well. Look, Eastern film fans love love a bit of Donnie Yen. You got to fight Donnie Yen. I saw the locker room t- scene and stuff. You look mean as hell in there and stuff. It was like excellent. It was like. It was nice. How did that come about? Was that Mike Leader that got you in that, or what? What? How was that? Was that a bit? Of, yeah, a bit of that and stuff. Yeah. It must have been fun to to fight Donny. Yeah, it was great. I mean, yeah. the thing is, like I said, I thought, well, I did my first movie. Uh, yeah. I'm on a poster. I'm one of the main character. Nothing yeah, is yeah. going to get easier. I finally got an agent in Paris, and I didn't work for two years. And yeah, the only the thing, thing I was offered is henchman number three, henchman number four. Yeah. And it was like, hold on a minute, this was for nothing. And that's where I realized how the industry works. Exactly. And then I kept in touch with uh, Mike. And then one time I moved to Hong Kong for about a year. I was teaching okay. MMA over there for a while. I even yeah. fought in Macau in the first ever MMA show in uh, uh, China. Oh, right. So I fought over there on live TV and stuff like yeah. that. So, uh, and I make a few connections and, and Mike tried to put me on a couple of movies. In fact, in Ip Man 1, he wanted me to play the boxer, but he didn't really work out. So nothing happened. And then I kept doing what I was doing. And then Mike yeah. said, hey, uh, they got this film coming up. They need an MMA guy with tattoo. Obviously, you seem to be the guy. It's not often they bring foreigner to Hong Kong to do movies. They usually mm-hmm. use local exactly. guys or guys that are in Asia, like Brahim, for example. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was a long shot. But um, I did a tape, I sent it to them, and straight away I got picked and I went over there and I remember flying for 12 hours and as soon as I landed, I started rehearsal. There was no break, no, we're going to take you to the hotel, none of that. Rehearsal yeah, all yeah, day, yeah. the stunt team wanted to see what was my skill, what I could do, how quick I could learn choreography, and yeah. then we get on with it. And, and obviously, Danny is very demanding, you know, he's a master of his craft. So mm. everything, every inches, every move that you do it has to be perfection. So it's very hard. And he's a movie star as well in his own right in Asia. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, 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 you know, it's not always easy to handle. And you got to adapt to work with Hong Kong. Because mm. I remember the last week of shooting, we would shoot from 8.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. yeah. At midnight, they would bring a burger and say, oh, there you go. That's you. That's your food. I was like, oh, okay. So you're going to be able to, to mm. walk with a very high expectation yeah, yeah. and very high pressure. Yeah. But I did okay. I was happy to, to work with Donnie and... Um, there you yeah, go. it is good. Yeah, I trained with Danny when I was a kid and stuff, which was a highlight for me. Uh, Mike brought him over and stuff way back. Um, it must have been nineties and stuff, and uh, he was uh, he, he was he was nice bloke and stuff. Nice bloke. But anyway, look, um, coming up and bringing it up to speed, we've got um, one shot. So one shot, I interviewed uh, James Lund as well, the director. Um, and that was, a again, a big part for you. And Scott, and the way his film was really interesting as well, for those that don't know, and not saying it, you should see it, it's one shot. Basically, it's one shot. I know it's a little bit of trickery with James and stuff. We talked about it. But essentially, it's one shot, one movie. What was that like for you to work, one, from the action point of view, but obviously deliver that? Because you've got to kind of do that, and you've got to nail it first time through, because obviously it's one shot for a reason. So was that a kind of a different kind of experience for you from a filming wise, as well as obviously the character, but you know, doing it. I think it happened at the right time because by the time yeah. one shot arrived, I had a lot more experience as an actor. I worked mm-hmm. with great filmmaker like we Wenders and um, Luc Besson. I work uh, yes. opposite Helen Mirren, Jess McAvoy, all those people. So now I become a bit more seasoned as an actor, as well as yeah. a performer. So it allowed me on the film to improvise a lot, because the camera is on you all the time. Obviously, some yeah. of those shots, like in between four to 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. So sometimes the camera is on you. I would say to James, listen, I don't have enough dialogue to go from A to B. Can I improvise? Can I walk on some stuff? He was like, yeah, sure. If he's not walking, I'll let you know. Yeah. And then each and every take, I would improvise some stuff. And then the actor in front of me then would know what to do, how to react. And James was very happy with what I was doing. But once again, because it was the right time and I was a lot more of a seasoned actor. As for the fighting, same thing. By that time, I fought Donnie. I fought in multiple films with different fight coordinator. Yeah. So I could do this fight with... Scott, who's very good at his craft again, and also that fight was three and a half minutes. There's no cut in it. 
It's a real one yeah, take. Exactly. And you've that's got to be going. ready to do that. Yeah, that's heavy going, isn't it? Because if you think about it, look, you're in a UFC when you do like a minute and three minutes and stuff, you know, you get a break in between the rounds and stuff. This is three minutes solid going at it. You know, that must take, that takes some stamina to do and deliver that on screen as well. Bearing in mind, you've got to be controlled in what you're doing, but also deliver it. That must be a task in itself. It's funny because the mm. take that I end up in a movie is not the best take. Uh, <laughs> I asked to do another take after that. And this take was perfect. The reaction, the way we fought and everything. Yeah. But the director liked this take because actually a few times we didn't end up in the right position and we both improvise. At one point, when I fall next to the knife, the knife is very far away from me, and I'm dragging Scott towards the knife. Yeah. That was not part of the choreography. It's just that uh, because we fought in the wrong way. And yeah. and James loved that, loved the singularity of it, and that's the reason why he picked um, that take. That but going backwards a little bit, the yeah. reason I end up on that movie is because of Jude Power. Jude oh, Power, okay. who yeah. I did a short film, yeah. 10 years ago, we always kept in touch. He always tried to put me on different projects. Don't often work out. I'm working with him right now on a French movie, funny enough. And he's the one who spoke to Scott about me. Ah. And then Scott asked the director to get late me tape. And I taped with all the other actors. And I was the best actor. And I got a part because of that. Mm, that's fantastic. And a um, little bit about Scott. Yeah, I've met Scott a couple of times. I've interviewed him twice. He's um first time I met him, obviously it was like what wow, it was like great. I, I get to meet him and interview him. And he's he's quite quiet. You know, I, I interviewed him with Jess and, and uh Lewis Mandalore and Scott, and Scott took a back seat and let them kind of talk. And he was very you had to kind of draw him out. How did you find to work with him and stuff? Obviously, he's very focused when he's driven, but as a person, he, he's he's quite, you know, within himself. He lets you kind of come towards him and bring him out of himself. What it was like? What was it like to work with uh, Scott? What was your impressions? Well, there's two things. First of all, I'm no spring chicken. I mean, I'm 50 years old now, so I'm, I, I know <laughs> how to handle it. Yeah. You know, uh, also, I worked in a fair share of movies with big movie stars, so I know yeah. when to approach them, when to let them go. Because I hear yeah. so many stories of people saying, well, the actor was not very nice. I'm like, yeah, but this actor do have a lot of pressure on his shoulder. Yeah, of course he's got to the producer, director, his personal life. So I always give them space. You know, we did yeah. some rehearsal together. It was not very chatty, but I didn't take it personally. Yeah. I let him do what he do. And also, he's got to carry the movie. He's got those long texts with his own mm -hmm. dialogue and stuff like that. But when it came to the fight, we really connected. That martial arts spirit, the martial art, you know, family, in some way that connected all of us together. Yeah. Um, and that works perfectly fine. And, and it's like we we barely done any rehearsal for that fight. You know, yeah. 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. But on the day, we just went over it's it because we it. were speaking the same language. Fantastic. That's fantastic. No, it's great stuff. Scott contacted me. Scott contacted me for Accident Man 2. Actually, oh. he wanted me to play a part on that. Yeah, uh, he yeah. was interested for me to play the clown. Yes. But I think eventually we realized I was not quite the right person for that. And I think the guy that he picked is perfect for it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fantastic. I, I'd like to see the, the rematch. I'm sure it'll come round. Um, you've got uh, you've got plenty of fight in your left, uh, left, Jess. You, you'll be you'll be fine. You got loads. You'll be you'll be good. You'll be good. A couple of things. Uh, one other thing before we get to uh, Ganapath, which has just come out. Um, but um, uh, one Ranger, Thomas Jane, Jesse V. Johnson again, great director. I love him. He brings it. Uh, he brings a passion and stuff. That would have been crack cracking cast. Thomas Jane as well. That must have been. A real, uh, a big one for you, for from an action point of view. Um, it went down well with. The I fans. mean, I, I've done, I've done so many big movies. Sometimes yeah, just yeah. as a performer, as a, as a fighter. Yeah. But yeah. you know, sometimes what's missing is is the passion. The passion sometimes disappear. And yeah. with JC, that's what I love about JC. Yeah. He's very Crazy. passionate about cinema. He loves it as much as I do, and that's what connected us. Yeah. Um, and I loved working for him. I, I love that we both. Um, created this character of Oleg. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was great. It was great. A lot of fight, obviously. Um, yeah, you yeah. know, a little bit different because we don't have that much time. And this time I don't have a martial artist in front of me. So yeah. we've got to make it work. And sometimes we only had 90 yeah. minutes to shoot a fight. Yeah, yeah. 90 minutes yeah. is nothing. No. Literally no nothing. So, no. But I'm quite happy with the film, what we've done, considering the budget. You know, I think I still managed also to create a great character. I was supposed to do another movie with JC in Spain recently, but the movie has been pushed. I think yeah. something to do with the stag, I suppose. So yeah, I yeah. think me and JC is going to meet again, but it was cool. a fantastic experience cool. to to work with someone who's so passionate. Yeah, I love JC. Your passion just comes through. It seeps from himself. It's a pleasure 
when I interviewed him. Um, it's great. And I'll look forward to whatever you do in the future. So bring your smack up to date. Ganapath just come out and stuff. It looks absolutely bonkers on the trailer. I've not seen it yet. It's literally just come out. Absolutely bonkers. Some great people in it. Uh, Branham's in it. Uh, Lou Charles in it. Yourself. Can you tell us anything about it? What got you involved? Anything about the film and stuff? I'm dying to see it. I've not seen it. I've just seen the trailer and it looks absolutely crazy. So I thought... We've got to get you on just to talk about that. It looks nuts. So how come you, uh, what was what was the uh, getting you involved in that? How come that came about? Well, at the time I was working with the stunt team on Expendable 4 and I received a phone yes. call from Marcus because Marcus initially was the first stunt coordinator on it. And then after Vincent took over, but Marcus was looking for fighters. So obviously he contacted me. And mm -hmm. when they contacted me, they were treated me like if I was a stunt performer. I was like, guys, if you want me on this, i got to be an actor. i got to play a part. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I didn't get any news. And then 24 hours before start shooting, I got a phone call and say, hey, this is the contract. You're starting tomorrow. <laughs> so at the time, every production were really uh, COVID crazy. So we had to do so many tests. Like before you start filming, three tests a week, mask on all the time. On this movie, it was completely the opposite. First day of shooting, I've got 160 extra around me. It is frozen warehouse because it's right in the middle of December. I'm bare feet, half naked. Not a single one of them had a COVID test. Not a single one of them have a mask. Everybody on this production could COVID. Everybody, including myself. That's the only time I had COVID and I caught it during that. Which was disappointing because for Christmas, I booked this wonderful hotel with amazing food and I could not test anything. Now, as for the film itself, uh, the fight coordinator was Tim, with yeah. whom I work on One Shot Again. Yeah, Tim yeah. is... Tim yes. Matt, obviously, for people who don't know, is a yes. fantastic coordinator. Yes, you, yeah. Uh, Brahim, my good friend, and we worked on, obviously, uh, big, big Brother together, but yes. me and Brahim knew each other for a long time. Yeah. So he was like back with the family, if you will. So yeah. if anything else, you know, because it's something else to work in a Bollywood production, but yeah. at least I had like, I felt like I was among some of my friends, so I felt kind of comfortable. It is. It's uh, nice to see it. Uh, Brown, yourself, Lee there's, Charles, there's a, there's a lot of you that all, and I, and I like the way you used earlier in the interview, they're like the martial arts kind of family and stuff, and it is, you know, we did, I know you did the Fighting Spirit Film Festival, which I couldn't get to, which two runs and stuff, but I do, and we do the Birmingham one, I get to on occasion, which is fantastic. And it is a family, and it's great to bring all those together. And it must be fantastic when you work on the productions and you see, you know, your, your fellow, your, your mates and stuff really on there as well. It must be fantastic. Look, a couple of questions left for you. So um, what have you got or what can you tease us? What's upcoming? What is? What are you up to next flying off to something um, next week but what well you... at the beginning of the year i did yeah. a film called um back in action with uh Carmion diaz and uh jimmy fox so i've got a fight sequence on that cool. i had a small role which was very much cut because i had to do the adr unfortunately it was it was very violent i didn't know why how they would get away with it because it was for netflix oh. it was uh, a film with um uh with kevin hart sorry the beginning of the year was with jimmy fox. oh yes it was yeah. with kevin hart it was a comedy yeah. And I was like, this thing is very violent. I had quite a bit of dialogue. And I play an Irishman in it, which was <laughs> yeah. that I'm gonna uh, say. I'm sure that's lift. I'm sure it's lift. Yeah, I'll look at, I'm gonna look forward to that. Then. Yeah, that's lift. Yeah, that's lift. it. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it was. Yeah. But they cut they cut three quarter of my dialogue because I think the scene didn't really work. It was pouring yeah. blood on my face. You had a dog ripping my face apart. And for a Kevin Hart movie, that didn't seem that's, right. Yeah, but funny. anyway, but, but it was still a great experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm on that. Cool. And also funny, I had to do the ADR and, and during the ADR, that American woman who couldn't stop telling me to rework on my accent because obviously I was doing an Irish accent, but I don't think yeah. she could quite understand what I was saying. But she keeps <laughs> saying, asking me to say things the wrong way. I was like, oh, leave me alone. Anyway, so I've got this coming up, I think in January, uh, yeah. after obviously back in action, uh, where I've got a fight sequence in that. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm, I'm shooting another movie for Netflix called wow. Nice Girls, uh, in which cool. I've got a bit of acting and Great fight nice. sequence with Jude as well. A very Hong Kong style, you know, the, okay. the way we're doing the fight. So I'm looking forward to the final results. And probably things here and there that I don't really remember. But nothing drastic acting-wise. They mainly fight sequences and small cameos yeah, yeah. and a few lines. But nothing very big at the moment when it comes to, to acting coming up. But I'm getting the sense that if there's something more character-driven, you're going to jump on it 
because it sounds like I mean the one ranger maybe a little bit and stuff because once it's that character you get that character and a bit like one shot you get more to do with the character and then the fight sequence are part of that you'd probably jump on a role that had something I think I think that's my niche that's the way yeah. I, I see myself yeah I'm yeah. a character actor that can do his own stunts yeah exactly because if you look at me on, on even one shot or one ranger or, or whatever else I'm a different guy I don't play yeah. the same character I've yeah, got exactly. different looks different the, the way I behave my accents are different so I, 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 I like to call myself because I was also inspired by Gary Oldman I'm a character actor that do fighting yeah. So even in Ganapath, Ganapath, I've got my only little storyline in it. Obviously, there's a big martial art tournament with Brahim and all of those guys. But me, I've got my own storyline, the other side, where I need to get um, a Tiger to get out of his shell. So I'm going to beat him up once, then he's going to train, then he's going to challenge me again. So And I've got cool. a different look on that again. So yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I don't mind what I do. It, eventually, we all put in a niche, whoever they are, even some of the most famous actors yeah. in the world. They yeah. are put either you comedy, you do drama, a few of them manage to do a bit of everything, but there are only a few of them, unfortunately. And I've got my niche, and the fact that I've got a niche means I'm walking, so I'm blessed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, I was going to say too, but before the final question, I'll ask you one more, and I probably know the answer to this, and you probably hinted towards it, but if you could work with any actor, any actor or actress, who would it be? Oh, definitely Gary Oldman. Yeah, I, I know because you just said it earlier. I was like, yeah, you, yeah. You want to work with your hero. And people always yeah. say, you know, maybe never meet your hero. But as I said, now I'm in an age when I can understand people better. And sometimes you can catch yeah. them on a good day or on a bad day, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and when I was on Expendable, funny enough, I told that story yes. to somebody else. I remember when I was 14 years old and, and a teenager and watching Rocky IV. And for me, it was a little bit like when those kids watched Marvel. Now I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I watched wow. this at people's. And as soon as the tape finished, I was like, can we watch it again? <laughs> and then I was on, I'm on the Expendable set. And uh, obviously, uh, Stallone wants to learn to do a wrestling move. And he say, hey, does any of do that wrestling? And then Pete uh, pointed at me and uh, Pete, who was the, the coordinator for the UK. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah, Jess, that's wrestling. And all of a sudden, Stallone smoking his cigar come right next to me and start talking to me about, is my back okay? Because he had surgery. And that felt so surreal, man. Wow. And I live for those moments, you know. So, yeah. Oh, that yes, means- I met. I met one my hero and it was a magical moment. I didn't took any picture because yeah. for me it didn't it didn't need to. That that moment yeah. was more important than any picture, any selfie I could have. Yeah, it's in it's in there. It's a memory or live long in the memory. Like, you know, I haven't still am like I say favorite of mine. Um the wife hates me because I'm always putting Rocky for one. But anyway, enough about that. Okay, the final question for you is the Eastern Film Fan question. So uh drum roll. Hold on. So it is if you're stuck on a desert island. And you can only take three films with you, and it can be any genre you want. What three films do you take? Three films is, is very difficult, I know. but I would say Casino. Nice. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, good. And Predator. Oh, <laughs> love a bit of Predator. <laughs> I love that. Thank you very much. Look. If I ever interview again, I'll ask you the same question. You can pick three other films. So it works. You know what I mean? You could just pick three three faves at the time and stuff. It works <laughs> that. Jess, it's been an absolute honour and a privilege. Thank you very much. Uh, just to get a glimpse into what you're doing today, your journey so far. And I wish you every success in the, in the future. Um, so thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Jess, have a great day, whatever you do. And uh, I'll uh, catch you soon, yeah? All right, bye. All right, thanks, Jess. Pleasure. Cheers, mate.